Hi! Welcome to this video. I'm super happy to meet you here again. <laughs> this vlog actually took me already a lot of time. Uh, maybe you can see that my last vlog I've uplo uploaded it on the 29th of April, which is my birthday as well. <laughs> and, and if you are following us on any other social platform like Instagram or Facebook, you maybe have already you've maybe already seen that I got a really 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 surprising birthday gift by my parents this year and if for all of you who don't know it already I got a drone which was I would have never ever expected that because you know a drone is just super super expensive and it really is a good one and I would have never ever expected that but I'm super super happy because I feel like my parents are really supporting me in this project and their support means so so much and also a part of the money that they have used came from uh, the money that was left over from what they got when my grandpa died 10 years ago and they did that because they felt like it would be his will to support me with this whole video project and that is just such a wonderful feeling because it actually is true he has loved making videos and photos all his life he's been kind of a camera enthusiast and he has been he has had so much camera equipment and he spent so much money on that and i'm sure it is true that he would have loved that if there would have already been youtube in the time when he was still alive and when he was not super super old then i'm pretty sure that he would become uh, would have become a really famous youtuber because he was running around with a camera all the time <laughs> and i'm so happy and also what i can tell you the tripod that is holding my camera right now is also originally from my grandpa and i'm so happy and <laughs> i just felt like i wanted to share that with you because i thought maybe you would like this story i don't know <laughs> and i'm super super happy and so the last weeks i've spent a lot of time with trying to get familiar familiar with the drone because it is not that easy actually but it is super super fun and also one of my uncles who have just moved here he got super interested in us in in the drone as well so we have uh, been we've been working together in this kind of because he has much more knowledge than i have with camera equipment and stuff and that was just so wonderful he actually has also have found a lot of fun with making little clips and little videos from the animals on the yard and everything like that so he has been supporting us a lot <laughs> and that is just so amazing because i feel this whole project of videos and vlogs and whatever got kind of a shower out of positive energy and it means it means so much to me and i'm super happy so i actually have been like i constantly feel this urge to create this video but i've always all the time felt like oh no i don't have enough material and then suddenly i felt like holy shit i have so much material i have no idea how to create a real vlog out of it out of it because there was so much that i would like to talk about and that i felt like i should be talking about that and i should show this and so many beautiful scenes and so it was a pretty long process so i thought i would just show you some clips from our life during the last weeks right now and maybe i will explain a little bit or maybe not i'm just um you let's roll the film Choo -choo!
back again <laughs> as you've probably seen we are in the middle of entering the season of summer and it is just ah oh, it's so beautiful <laughs> life is blooming out everywhere are flowers and it is just simply amazing and beautiful and still a lot of work but it is just I just feel like I can finally really feel alive again. It is just so, so wonderful. I actually have to admit that during the winter, I always forget how beautiful life can be. It is, I, I don't even remember it anymore in some way. And maybe that is good so that I'm able to go through all this gray and muddy days and hold on. But also I always feel like, holy shit how could i forget that this is possible you know when i look around it, it's just so beautiful it is so beautiful and i'm so so thankful for that but i sorry in order to show you kind of the full picture i should also share some of the heavy parts of our love or life right now and i have to admit that i always feel like it is a little bit hard to talk about this topic um, but I would like to share a little bit of this with you as well. well, because on the one hand I really want to be authentic and I want to show you an authentic picture and I don't want to, you know, it's not my intention to just show you how amazing I am or my life is or whatever, I just really want to share my reality and my truth and that is not only you know, flowers and sunshine. So I thought I would get into this as well and share with you a few of the heavy parts of living together with so many animals and being self-employed and being, and yeah, just being me. So as you maybe remember, we've always had some struggles with health issues with the animals. So um, maybe you remember some of them and the two main problems have been from my Billy Peppino and from the pig Daisy and I quickly mentioned that in the in the last autumn but I never really came back to that I guess so I just thought it would be time to give you a little bit of an update because I have to admit that the problems are not solved yet which feels really heavy for me and you maybe can imagine that it is pretty difficult to share something where you feel like you are failing really hard even though it is an area where it would be really important not to fail but it's just the truth i'm actually failing at that pretty hard <laughs> and i would like to start with Pepino because his uh, problem is already much older i Actually, I'm at, I'm, at, I'm at a point where I think maybe it is something that he's struggling with since his birth, but maybe not, I don't know. He has just always had a little bit more difficulties with his health than other goats. And, and he also has, um, I don't know how to say that, he has never been able to become a father, so, so he looked like a normal Billy but uh, he never has been able to become a father <laughs> so for me that was great because i never wanted my goats to produce more lambs or goat babies <laughs> but um, i've always wondered why that has not been working for him and actually like two years ago it started that he got much more sick and he has always had struggles with his skin, especially during the winter, but it never really got uh, well again. And he also lost his uh, beard. He has had a really amazing, beautiful beard and every guy coming here was like, oh, I would like to have that beard. <laughs> but then he lost him and I, I always thought that it would grow back, but it didn't. And then last autumn it was that he got problems with his eyes and one of them started to get blind and I needed to tr treat them with medicine like a couple of times a day and it was a lot of work during nearly the whole winter and also his whole health, health his whole 
so all his whole body seems to seems to get weaker and he got really much pr struggles with his skin you know, with his fur with just his energy was getting low, lower and lower and lower and I've tried a lot of stuff like the normal stuff against parasites and it did not work and I I can't even tell you everything but for me it seems that there is something wrong with him and I don't know maybe it is a disease or it has something to do with his hormones or with his genes genetic genetically or maybe it, there are parasites and maybe just the medicine that I gave him was not the right thing I don't know <laughs> Uh, so he actually looks really shitty right now and I can really feel that he's not as energized as he should be and I mean he is not super young anymore he is uh, nine nearly ten years old but for me that is not a reason why a goat is looking so crappy uh, especially because my white goat Wanda she is uh, three years older than him and she does not have these problems so I, I don't really know and I gave him like three week, weeks, three weeks, two weeks ago I've decided to, to, um, to take three more weeks. I've, I've bought some new supplements for his food and I've decided to go to, with, on walks with, uh, with the goats as often as possible because sometimes I'm like, oh I have still much, much to do and then I don't get out with them like two weeks or something like that. And now I thought I really have to go out with them so that he can eat what his body needs and that he can move and maybe he's getting more energy out of that. So that was like two weeks ago but I have to admit that I don't see a real change till now and I really got at first I thought like oh it has just been a heavy winter for him and maybe he needs a little bit of time to recover but it's not that. I feel like there is something that is a problem for him already since almost at least two years and I don't really know what it is and I feel super super sorry about that and I feel like there must be something that I have done wrong wrong and I, I don't I haven't even noticed that so if it is not getting much better during the next couple of days then I will really have to try out new ways to find out what is wrong with him and I think I will share this process with, with you because you know even if I'm doing all this stuff since so many years and I'm living together with animals all my life there are so often situations where I just have no idea what to do I have no idea and I think it is always good to connect with each other about that even though maybe none of you will ever have or have ever had ever had <laughs> a goat like that I think maybe maybe we can just inspire each other with finding solutions and maybe there is somebody out there who knows something about that and who's having an idea so I would love to hear about that Hi. <laughs> and there's another animal that is really sick and that is my pig Daisy you know her her companion Paulchen she died like six weeks ago no more than that like two months ago yes two months ago um so daisy is alone but she has already had these struggles um since the end of last summer and it got just worse and worse and worse and worse and uh, oh no i have forgotten the word of the disease so so she has she has i will write the name of the disease here somewhere so that you know what I mean but she's having a lot of pain in her legs in her front legs and that is really really heavy because it is a kind of a disease that is hard to treat especially if you are a pig because it is pretty difficult to treat diseases with pigs because most um, pigs are not even getting as old as she is <laughs> and there are many things that you might find for a dog but not for a pig for example it is super difficult to get painkiller for a pig so good painkiller and that really is a difficult project as well and you know Daisy is pretty old she already is 14 years old and um, she don't have a companion anymore and I sometimes feel like her life really is, has not have a lot of quality left because 
she's having daily pain even then I'm giving giving her painkiller but the painkiller always just lasts for a couple of hours and then it's getting worse again and so it is I sometimes feel like it probably is time to put her down but on the one hand I'm always really careful about that because I like I really like it with when the animal is able to leave this life by its own so my experience is that often animals have a really unique way to to move on from this life and to leave their body and I really like that to to give them the opportunity to just leave peacefully and by their own will kind of so when they are ready you know I it's hard to explain that um, but of course just if it's not with too much pain and it's I think that that kind of questions are kind of the heaviest one especially when it is a pig <laughs> that is super super scared from the veterinarian and from getting injections I guess you say that injections injection um, so Daisy is one of those pigs who are so super afraid of veterinarians that she can get super aggressive as well uh, and also with pigs it is much diff more difficult to put them down than with most other animals because there are many more complications that can happen and I don't know I just really don't want to take this decision without feeling really clear about that and also I still have a little bit of hope that it is getting better someday so right now we are just trying to find our way in between all these huge questions we are trying out different painkillers and trying out what else could help and for example I'm uh, I'm always when I get the, the opportunity I always bring some wild herbs from the forest to her I don't know the, the English name but in German they are called Teufelskalle which uh, means if you translate it devil's claw or something like that it's not super friendly name but it is a super friendly plant and um, it should help against her disease so I bring that to her every couple of days whenever I get time because you know it does not cost anything but I just need to walk 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 there and when I'm when I am there I bring some of them for her and I don't see any effects of that <laughs> But she likes to eat it, so we try just try out whatever we we feel like trying out, <laughs> and yes, I, we will see how this journey is going to move on and how it's going to turn out. And yes, I I will keep you updated about that as well. And maybe you do have some advice about that as well. I I have no idea. I would love to hear if you guys are living together with animals as well. So yes, just let me know and. I will let you know as well. And the next animal that really is having struggles with his health is a little rabbit Lottie. So you've maybe heard about that in my stories or in my in my last video or whatever. But she has had a surgery at her throat. She has had a uh, I have no idea to say that stuff in English, but she has had a lot of struggles and she needs daily care since many weeks and it is not getting better. I've been at the veterinarian with her like at least one or two times a week and um, that really is kind of getting a big project as well. And I will tell you more about that as soon as I know anything new but by part of that most of the animals seem to be in good health just uh, one of the cows Molly she's having kind of she's getting some kind of something similar to milk in her udder and uh, I've been really worried about that as well because she has done that already several times I don't know why I think it's something about her hormones that it causes her to produce something similar to milk even though there is no baby for that milk uh, and she's also not pregnant and actually my other cow Millie she's also producing milk but, but she's producing real milk even 
so she has not had her own baby as well but she's producing it for one of the youngest cows that I have she's done that for every calf that we got and um, one of the calves her name is Emma she's still sucking at the other other she's so she's still drinking the milk and so Millie is always producing a little bit of milk just for her foster daughter but Molly does not let any calf suck at her udder and she still is producing something similar to milk <laughs> and uh, it, she as I said she has already done this a couple of times but this time it got a lot and it got just like really I don't know how to say it just uh, not soft, opposite of soft, <laughs> hard, uh, yeah, hard. <laughs> so it was. I was scared that it would get. Uh, she it would cause some problems. So I started to try to milk her, but she has not worked with it pretty well. She has been pretty annoyed about my idea of milking her. her so I've stopped it a little while ago, and I've noticed that now it's getting a little bit less. So I hope that her body is going to to kind of. You know get rid of that in a natural way but I'm a little bit confused about that as well because I don't know why she is doing that um, and it is not normal for a cow to produce milk without a baby because cows are um, are just like humans they do produce milk when they have a baby I know that because they're so breeded so so strongly on producing milk that it is it can happen then they that they produce milk. Uh, it is the same with milk goat. It is the same with milk goats, but I still feel a little bit confused um, why that is happening and why that is happening to her. So I don't know. Maybe I will find out that as well. <laughs> and also, maybe you have already seen that, but maybe I'm just talking stuff that you already know. But maybe you. Um, So uh, my battery died, so I have to hurry up. So I just have these mice and I love them a lot, but as soon as I have two of them who are ready to get set free, I let them run free. And yes, that is a huge project as well. <laughs> so, but now I really have to end this walk and um, I feel totally stressed out now. I don't feel like I can talk anymore. I, I actually just wanted you to know that you know living together with so many animals and doing what I do it can feel extremely confusing and heavy as well and I have to admit that I often get into this feeling of being completely overwhelmed and just being able to see everything that is missing and feeling like holy crap uh, especially also financially you know I have this summer I have to <laughs> I have to kind of rebuild my whole winter construction for the shelter of my cows and I will have to spend a couple of thousand euro for that and I, I have a lot of problems because we have had a really dry spring so the grass on my fields has not been growing as much as I have expected it and that um, means that I don't know how I'm going to feed my cows in four weeks <laughs> and um, that, that I mean I know that there always is an, uh, another option that is feeding hay but that is super expensive and there's so much running around in my mind and I want to be honest about that and don't just hide it away um, on the one hand for you guys because I want you to really know what's going on and to have a clear idea not just a romantic picture of kind of paradise and also for me because I don't want to feel like I have to hide things from you and so I'm really happy that I've just started to talk about that and yes it, it's just it already feels so much better <laughs> and I really hope that you understand it in some way uh, so I, I feel like I'm I don't know I feel like I'm 
in kind of an in-between mode in so many areas of my life I feel like I'm always kind of in between everything I don't really know what to do next and how to handle everything and I feel like that is an amazing state because on the one hand you are you know everything is possible in this state it is just like everything is possible and you are having so many decisions to make and that is on the one hand super difficult and on the other hand it is super empowering so it is an amazing time of my life but it is not an easy time of my life <laughs> and I'm sometimes really scared about what is going to happen in the future and if I have to get back to a kind of a normal job and I don't know I don't know and but but what the spring and the summer is really showing me is that this constant feeling of lack and this this focus on all the things that are missing and what we should be doing and what we should have and everything like that that actually is just a sign of imbalance because this universe is so abundant it is just it's so amazing you know if you look in the nature it is so natural that sometimes it may seem like there is not enough like during the winter and if it's getting quiet and cold and ugly <laughs> but everything is there everything is ready to bloom out when it's time to bloom and I feel like we we should really learn to trust more into that that even though it may our life may look super ugly and chaotic and cold and <laughs> you feel like oh, I'm not where I want to be that maybe just means that it's not time to bloom now but that does not mean that you will never bloom and it is so amazing and I think I really have to end this vlog now I'm actually pretty amazed that the, that the battery is still working <laughs> I, got, I felt so stressed out and now it's working pretty well but um, before I end this vlog there's one Thing left that I really want to say and that is just thank you on the one hand of course for watching this video and <laughs> listening to me and taking the time and everything but also just like everything you know I know that the topics that I have committed to are really sensitive ones and if you look around in the animal rights movement you can see a lot of conflicts and hate and judgment and you know just really negative energy and I mean in some way I can understand that because sometimes it feels really hard for me as well to just accept what is happening on this world you know there's so much pain happening and just being super peaceful and loving and stuff sometimes I'm not like that as well but I don't want to to, it's not my intention to increase this level of negativity. I, I really am interested in, in building bridges between humans and animals and also between humans with different opinions. And I'm just so, so grateful that so many of you seem to be the same. And so many of you are interested in new ideas and in changes and in, and in really getting connected with animals and changing your perspective and and everything like that but that you are not that judging and you're just so wonderful people and I'm so so deeply grateful for that so I I really want to send you a huge thank you from all my heart and especially for all the people who are supporting me and us on Patreon with Patreon you guys are just giving me so much more freedom and this you're helping me to kind of get to feel this freedom and it's just I can't really describe in words I just want to thank you with with all my heart I really hope to see you soon again take care everybody and bye bye Thank you.